Higher order derivatives are derivatives of derivatives. There are two common systems of notation and it is useful to master both. I will describe them in this video. If f is a function, I can think of its derivative f prime as another function. Assuming f is differentiable, at every point in the domain, f prime gives me another number. And then I can also take the derivative of the derivative, which we call the second derivative, and so on. There are two standard systems of notation for these higher order derivatives. First, there is Lagrange's notation. If I have a function f, its first derivative, or simply its derivative, is called f prime. Its second derivative is called f prime prime, or perhaps f double prime, and so on. But at some point we get tired of writing primes. For any positive integer n, I can define the nth derivative of f and I write it as f with an n in parentheses as an exponent. For example, consider the function f defined by f of x equals x to the 7. Then the derivative is 7x to the 6, and the second derivative is 42x to the 5. The third derivative is 42 times 5, which is 210, times x to the 4, and so on. The eighth derivative could be zero, because after seven derivatives, all the x's are gone. Be careful with this notation. The n in the exponent needs to be in parentheses. This way, the notation is standard and everybody uses it for the same purpose. By contrast, if we write n as an exponent of a function without the parentheses, it is not clear what it means. You have encountered this before in some specific cases. For trigonometric functions, it is understood that n as an exponent without parentheses means power. But this is for trigonometric functions only. There is a second usage, less common. I have seen it more often with logarithms. Here, an exponent without parentheses would mean composition. This is not universal, so it is probably a good idea if we ever want to use this notation to say so first. But the notation for the derivative with the parentheses is safe and unambiguous, so do not forget those parentheses. The second notation for higher order derivatives is Leibniz notation. This notation is particularly well suited for physics. Let's assume that y and x are physical quantities, and that y is a function of x. Then, as you know, we can write the first derivative of this function as dy over dx. Remember, this does not mean that dy is a number and dx is a number and I divide them. Rather, here's how to interpret it. Start with the physical quantity y and apply the operator d over dx to it. d over dx means takes the derivative with respect to x, and it is an operation. When applied to the physical quantity y, it produces a new physical quantity dy over dx. And we call this the derivative of y with respect to x. With this same notation, how do we write the second derivative? d2y over dx2. Why do we put the twos in those places? Think of it this way. I start with the physical quantity y, I apply the operator d over dx to it, and then I apply the operator d over dx to it again. That is why I write the twos in exactly those places. The two in the numerator tells us that we perform two operations, two derivatives to the physical quantity y. The two in the denominator tells us that we took both derivatives with respect to x. And we call this the second derivative of y with respect to x. More generally, how do I write the nth derivative with this notation? dny over dxn. Think of it as applying the operator d over dx n times to the physical quantity y. And we call it the nth derivative of y with respect to x. This notation has a particularly nice advantage when we are dealing with physical quantities. It reminds us of the dimensions of the derivatives. By dimensions, I mean basically their units. For example, let's call x the position of a particle and let t represent time. Assume that x depends on t, the particle is moving. We measure the position x in meters and time t in seconds. What about the derivatives? The velocity is the derivative of x with respect to time. There is one x in the numerator, giving us meters, and there is one t in the denominator, giving us seconds, so we measure velocity in meters per second. Now look at the acceleration, which is the second derivative of x with respect to time. There is one x in the numerator, 
but two t's in the denominator. The placement of those twos was very important. So we measure the acceleration in meters per second squared. And that is a good advantage of the Leibniz notation in physics, or more generally in science. We can keep track of the dimensions of any quantity we define using derivatives.